Okay, so now I'm going to describe the main result for the training dynamics. And in the feature regression model, that was just this kernel K, that was no problem. Uh, for a neural network, it turns out to be something slightly complicated called the neural tangent kernel, and it has a funny evolution rule. So that's what I'm going to write down now. I'm going to tell you what the neural tangent kernel is uh, and what, the, what it says. So this is theorem 21 in the notes. Theorem 21 in the notes, and it says that uh, there is a kernel. For each layer L, there is a kernel. Theta L of xx prime, and the following happens. If you look at the Lth layer of the network, and you compute its gradient with respect to the weights, and make the matrix by multiplying it by its transpose, then this thing is converging to this elf layer neural tangent kernel. Uh, and moreover, so this is converging to this. It, this doesn't depend on theta 0. So you can say that this is converging to that, or you can say that the expected value of this is converging to that. Uh, both of these things are the same. So the relevant kernel that is driving the evolution is, is this kernel theta L. And what do I mean by it drives the evolution? Uh, you can write down this kind of evolution equation, which is similar to what we had in the regression model. So if you're in the uh, supervised learning situation with training data uh, x, then the output of the network evolves according to the last layer. So L plus 1. So uh, what this means is that this, this kernel beta, the neural tangent kernel, is going to control uh, the training dynamics of the network just as the kernel for the feature regression model controlled the training dynamics for that simple model. So you can exactly solve this. You can get, just like we did before, you can write down the exact solution. You can write down f of x, theta infinity, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So anything you can do um, in the linear case, you can do it now using the neural tangent kernel. So I should tell you how the neural tangent kernel evolves now. So you can figure out a formula for it. And it's extremely similar to this formula for the NNGP kernel. And in fact, it depends on the NNGP kernel. So uh, in the NNGP kernel, you had to have these two variables, z and z prime, and you did some expected value of the nonlinearity. So to define the neural tangent kernel, you need this, and you need the same thing with the derivative of the nonlinearity. So how is the neural tangent kernel defined? And the answer is you need two kernels. So you need the, the NNGP kernels from before. Uh, sigma L of xx prime. So this was defined to be this definition, expected value over zz prime, phi of z times phi of z prime plus sigma b squared. That was the definition of the NNGP kernel sigma L. You need something else now, which is like the derivative version of this. So not literally the derivative, but uh, we're going to call it sigma dot of L of xx prime. And that's the same thing, but instead of using phi, you use the derivative of phi. So sigma w squared expected value zz prime of phi dot of z phi dot of z prime. So, so it's the same thing with the derivatives. There is no sigma b on this one. And uh, zz prime are, as before, zz prime are, are taken to be Gaussian, Gaussian with mean 0 and this covariance structure from the previous layer. Okay, so you have these matrices sigma L and sigma prime of uh, L, and they are they are the Gaussian, the NNGP kernel for the layer L. And the way you make the NTK uh, out of this thing is you do some matrix multiplication. So the, the rule that propagates the NTKs is this rule, theta L of xx prime, it's equal to theta L minus one of xx prime times sigma L minus one of xx prime. Okay, no, that's a lie. It's a sigma L times xx prime times the dot plus sigma L of xx prime. And this rule comes out of chain rule. So this derivative here has something to do with chain rule. And you can see exactly how it works out in the proof. Uh, this is essentially what the result is. Uh, you have to be a little bit more careful than I'm being here in this presentation about what happens about the diagonals and multidimensional things. The exact version is in the notes, so you should check that out. But this is very roughly speaking uh, what the result is. 
And uh, yeah, those are the two major results. So, so one thing is this NTK, which has this complicated story. And the other one is this NNGP, which tells you what happens on initialization. And if you combine these two um, results, you can figure out anything about the, the network uh, in this limit where the width gets very large.